Good evening, everyone. Ron Vitel here, nutrition and lifestyle coach for Siskiyou Vital Medicine, a direct primary care naturopathic clinic here in Mefford, Oregon, in beautiful Southern Oregon, where the weather is absolutely stunning today. Clear skies, crisp air, gotta love the fall season. So we are a direct primary care facility, uh, and we are a membership-based uh, um, uh, program direct primary care allows us to um, bring people in and decrease the cost of health care the better you are the better we are it's fantastic what we enjoy doing is really helping people with uh, a variety of chronic conditions helping people uh, maintain wellness as, as well as achieve wellness in a holistic fashion in a naturopathic fashion so we love getting to the underlying causes of, of chronic conditions and help turning them around and giving people a higher quality of health uh, for a reduced cost. Uh, one of the beautiful things about direct primary care is that you get unrestricted access to us, which is um, a novel concept in this day and age of, of medicine. So if you're not familiar with us, go to uh, www.siskiyouvitalmedicine.com check out uh, what we have to offer. If you're in the area, please come see us. Come in for a, a, an initial free 15 minute consult. See if it's something that resonates with you because we'd love to help you out. Love to help you get well and stay well. And so tonight, uh, as you can see, um, I, I don't have Dr. Duncan or Dr. Halsey with me, nor do I have any special guests that I'm interviewing. So everybody was busy this week. So I am here on Wednesday Night Live on my own. And tonight, what I want to talk about was digestive bitters, or is digestive bitters, not was. We're still in the present tense, aren't we? So digestive bitters uh, is one of my favorite topics to talk about because they have such a myriad of benefits in the physiology. And what's really interesting is we have these taste buds uh, that are really uh, 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 information receivers. They receive information about what's going in the mouth and they let us know if it's safe or not safe in many ways. And, and uh, bitter is probably the most important taste bud we have ever developed. And it's the one that we have eliminated from our diet and we've replaced it with sweet. And what I wanna do is talk with you about um, the variety of benefits of bitters, but I also wanna walk you through their physiological actions, um, something called the xenobiome, uh, which is, is involved with the liver. And we're gonna just go through and talk about mm, uh, uh, how we got to where we are today with the reduction of bitters in our diet and how important they are and how we can incorporate them back in to our everyday dining experience as well as therapeutic approach to a variety of conditions. So let's, let's get going here. And, and, and if you have any questions at any point, please post up, a, post up a question in the comments section. I'd be happy to answer them. Really love getting questions because it can help direct the conversation in new and exciting places. So we have this thing called the xenobiome. And the xenobiome is basically the comprehensive chemical environment in which the liver evolves. So our, our liver over millennium has uh, evolved uh, Becoming, by becoming familiar with various chemicals in the environment, specifically as uh, uh, up until the modern era with the, with the manufacturing of synthetic chemicals, um, up until that point, it has always been plant compounds, plant chemicals. So not everything in plants is good for us or safe. And, and what's really interesting, I had a, I had a mentor many years ago who was a PhD nutritional biochemist and he would say to me, you know, Ron, plants don't want to be eaten. And I used to think that was the strangest statement. And then he started to show me how every plant manufactures its own version of pesticides. And these compounds that are in the plants are potentially toxic uh, to insects specifically and also to us. And what has happened is over time, we have co-evolved. Some like to use the term, we have coherently coupled with plants 
over hundreds of thousands of years. Long, we have a long-standing historic interaction uh, with the plant world. And one of the things with uh, plants is that we would try a little bit of them and see how it tasted. And if there was some bitter in there, that was a signal that there's possibly something potentially toxic in this plant and I shouldn't eat too much of it. And we're gonna, we're gonna learn a little bit more about, about why that is in a minute. But every time we consumed a little bit of a plant, we were introducing chemicals, phytochemicals into our physiology that our liver had to figure out what to do with. So over time, the liver has developed specific detoxification enzymes, detoxification pathways that were designed to uh, metabolize these plant compounds, these xenoestrogens, and eliminate them to reduce the toxic burden in our physiology. So as we developed this relationship with plants, we also developed this bitter taste uh, uh, sensation, this bitter taste receptor that was designed to give us really good information about whether plants are safe or not. Now, one of the interesting things about plants is that, uh, uh, you know, there is, there, there are, nutritious plants that are rich in carbohydrates that tend to be more sweet. There are salty plants that have a higher mineral status, and that's where the saltiness would come from. Then we have pungent plants that that pungent um, spiciness comes from volatile aromatic compounds. And we can usually, we usually smell those uh, before we taste them. And, and sense of smell is directly related to sense of taste, right? We, we can smell more things than we can taste. And if you've ever had a stuffy nose and you tried to eat, you realize that when you have a stuffy nose, you can't really taste your food very well. So smell is directly tied in with taste. Now, bitter, bitter is a taste that is found in all plants. Sweet isn't, sour isn't, salty isn't, nor is spicy. But bitter is found in all plants to some degree, in some plants more than others, right? So if we were to take something like wheat as an example, wheat we would think of more in the sweet category. It's a carbohydrate rich, starchy uh, uh, plant, but the outer coating of the bran has a bitter comp, has a bitter taste to it. So there is bitter in there. Uh, another grain, something like quinoa, uh, has saponins around the external uh, uh, seed, and those can be bitter, so it's really good to rinse them. So all plants have some degree of bitter taste to them, some less than others. And it was over time where we have been consuming plants that uh, we developed this, this repertoire, our liver developed this repertoire of chemicals that it became uh, knowledgeable of, that it came to know and it knew how to handle it, knew how to detoxify it, break it down into metabolites that were, weren't so toxic and get it out of the system. And the way that that was done is um, with the production of bile and bile is secreted in the gallbladder and then eventually down into the uh, um, uh, bile and uh, pancreatic duct into the uh, small intestines and eventually eliminated via feces, right? So this is how, this is a natural detoxification uh, uh, pathway or elimination route is what I should say. And so uh, what's fascinating about this is that the liver um, actually needs a little bit of a challenge to do its job. Uh, so if the liver isn't getting stimulated by something like bitters, it tends to become sluggish. So what we've done in the, the modern era is we have replaced bitter with sweet. Now, our ancestors didn't really have this luxury. Our Paleolithic ancestors, as well as our, our agrarian uh, ancestors, up until the Industrial Revolution about 200 years ago, uh, well, about 200 years ago when we started to refine and, and process foods, um, is when we really started to replace bitter foods with sweet foods. Now, 
our ancestors ate a lot of plant material. Our ancestors consumed upwards of 95 to 300 plus different plants for food and medicine. And so there was a, a real strong relationship with the plant world. And that was a lot of phytochemical information streaming into the physiology, all of which could stimulate the liver and, and get it doing its detoxification uh, more efficiently. So without that little bit of challenge, the liver becomes sluggish and slow to detoxify. And where we are today, a lot of my friends who are herbalists talk about having a bitter deficiency syndrome, which I, I, I would agree with. This is a really important um, um, uh, uh, taste for us, and it's one that we've eradicated. And so what's happened is that uh, uh, the liver becomes a little bit sluggish, Every, the food is being replaced with sweet foods, and we're, not just get, we're just not getting the challenge that we need. Now, with, with bitter taste buds, what's fascinating about them is that there are a variety of bitter taste receptors. So sweet, salty, sour, spicy, they have about one type of receptor for each one of those. With bitter, there's over 20 different types of receptors for bitter. And with sweet, sour, salty, spicy, those taste receptors are found on the tongue. With bitter, there are bitter receptor sites, not just on the tongue, but there are bitter receptor sites in the cardiovascular system. There are bitter receptor sites um, all throughout the, the small intestine, in the throat, in uh, the lungs, actually, and that when, when, when the bitter receptor sites in the lungs are stimulated, it actually triggers the lungs to relax. So you can even think about using bitters as uh, a possible adjunct remedy for something like asthma, even, or some sort of constricted lung issues. Um, there's also bitter receptor sites in the pancreatic duct, as well as in the um, uh, uh, brain. So brain cells even have bitter receptor sites. Reason being is because bitters actually will stimulate vagus nerve activity. And that can actually cause enhanced digestion. The vagus nerve is a nerve that runs from the brainstem, uh, innervates a variety of organs eventually into the gut. And it's the main communication pathway between the gut and the brain. That's the gut-brain axis right there. And so bitters can actually stimulate brain cells, increase vagus nerve tone, improve digestion, improve neuronal functioning. So bitters can do a variety of things there. But one of the best things that bitters uh, do is they stimulate digestive forces. So when we consume bitters and that taste of bitter, and that's really the important thing is actually getting the taste of bitter uh, on the tongue. That taste of the bitter on the tongue will immediately send a message to the stomach to start producing hydrochloric acid. It'll send a message to the pancreas to start secreting pancreatic juices. It'll send a message to the gallbladder to start uh, um, releasing bile. The gallbladder is a bulbous shaped organ like a baby aspirator and when it's stimulated it contracts and it releases bile through the bile duct down into the small intestine and that helps with fat emulsification. So uh, so what you, what you have happen when you get the taste of bitter in your mouth is you get this threefold uh, stimulation of all your digestive forces. So for improving digestion, it's really one of my favorite things to do. A lot of people will take digestive enzymes uh, or they'll take hydrochloric acid and sometimes there's a need for that. But really by starting with bitters, what you're doing is you're, you're stimulating your own inherent digestive forces. And that's really important. We want, we want to uh, produce and secrete our own digestive forces. We don't, there is a time and place for this, uh, you know, uh, with digestive enzymes and hydrochloric acid. If somebody has hypochlorhydric, meaning they have weak stomach acid, then, then hydrochloric acid supplements are really important. But as a first line of improving digestion, 
we really want to work with the bitters. That way we're stimulating our own inherent forces and we're not relying on something from the outside to come in and digest for us. And with hydrochloric acid, there's a buildup uh, to it and it can actually build up your stomach acid and then you can titrate back down. So that, that's really unique in its own capacity there. But with, with um, just of enzymes, they just kind of come in and they do the work. So I'm a big fan of stimulating our own forces. That's what we're really doing. In the world of nutrition, uh, uh, I, I look at nutrition as um, a resistance process. And the, the, the more resistance that, uh, um, that food gives in the digestive process, that means there's more nutrition in it. So when you're eating whole foods and you're eating whole plant foods that need a lot of digestive forces to be broken down, your body knows that and will produce the, 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 the um, digestive secretions that are necessary, the pancreatic juice, the hydrochloric acid, the bile, if it has the capacity. And bitters can help with that. And so the more resistance, the more nutritious. The flip side of that is when you consume refined processed foods, right? The, 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 the nutrients are, are stripped out of it. The, the brands may be taken away. The fiber is taken out. You just have this white starchy flour in front of you. It's not a lot of resistance there. It breaks down really quickly, really easily. And, and that's why you get this spike in blood sugar also because there's, this, there's no resistance there. It goes through the digestive system rapidly and you get this rapid rise of blood sugar, which isn't good for the physiology. One of the things that bitters do is they actually help stabilize blood sugar levels, which is a, a, one of the most important things, in my opinion, that we can do when we eat, is eat uh, in a way that maintains stable blood sugar levels. When we spike and crash our blood sugar levels and when we're on that blood sugar roller coaster, what that does is it, is it um, can impact all of our key neurotransmitters, our serotonin, our dopamine, acetylcholine, our GABA. And so it can disrupt all of our neurotransmitters, which then disrupts our thinking and our feeling life and can lead to um, uh, poor choices poor actions, uh, confused thoughts, uh, emotional imbalances. And so we really want to make sure that we eat to stabilize blood sugar levels. Well, what, when we put some bitter foods into our diet, and you can do that with salad greens and a variety of other things, and we'll get there. What that will do is one, the taste of the bitter sends a signal to the liver that, whoa, wait a minute, there might be something that's potentially toxic here. And uh, you may not want to eat too much of that. So what that does is it, one, reduces the uh, appetite. So you don't eat as much of that food. And it also will help to stabilize blood sugar levels. So these are some like innate mechanisms within us that our body knows what to do when we get the taste of bitter. The other thing that bitters can do is that they can um, um, not only stabilize blood sugar levels uh, and increase um, uh, the secretion of your digestive juices, uh, but in addition to um, reducing appetite, bitters can be used to stimulate a weak appetite. And I use this a lot with, with elderly people who start to lose their appetite. I give them digestive bitters because one of the flip sides to this is that when you take in digestive bitters and give yourself some time, all your digestive forces are revved up and that means your appetite's gonna come online. And so if, you, if you're suffering from a poor appetite or you've been sick, and, and you just haven't been able to eat much, but you really feel you need to, digestive bitters can be one way to stimulate your appetite. And another benefit of digestive bitters is they actually uh, can reduce inflammation in the gut wall. And that's big. 
because gastric inflammation is a major issue right now. Think of things like irritable bowel syndrome and Crohn's disease. Also, just people consuming foods that they may be allergic to or they're having an immunological reaction to them and there's this inflammation going on in the gut. And that inflammation in the gut can translate back up the vagus nerve to the brain and cause neuroinflammation. And when you start to have neuroinflammation, that can accelerate neurodegeneration. And as you have accelerated neurodegeneration, that's going to feed back down to the gut and it's going to impact the gut in a negative way. It will actually slow gut motility, uh, meaning that food will stay in the gut for a longer period of time, which leads to the possible fermentation of carbohydrates, the putrefying of proteins, and the rancidification of fats, all of which sets up this really wonderful environment for dysbiotic bacteria to come in and, and, and create this unhealthy ecosystem in the gut. So the bitters can come in, they can, they can reduce inflammation in the gut, they can uh, improve digestive function and get things moving. Another benefit to a lot of bitters is that many bitters tend to actually be antimicrobial as well. So some classic bitters would be things like uh, wormwood, which is also antiparasitic, antimicrobial, uh, Oregon grape root, another one that's antimicrobial, so you have these wonderful antimicrobial compounds in these bitter foods or in these bitter uh, herbs, I should say, in these bitter plants that can be used medicinally. Now, um, when we're looking at bitter foods to incorporate into our diet, dandelion greens are fantastic. You can get them at, at a, a good uh, um, uh, co-op or natural food store. We'll usually have really high quality dandy, dandelion greens or your, locals, your local farmer's market. Or if you're a wild crafter, you can go out and just eat some dandelion leaves out of a, out of a field somewhere that's, that are clean, preferably. Uh, doesn't take much, just a leaf or two, just to get that taste of bitter in there. Endive, escarole, those are really good to add into your diet. Those have nice bitter compounds to them. Also your dark leafy greens. So things like uh, mustard greens, uh, collard greens, kale, those all have a, a slightly bitter aspect to them. Also chicory root, dandelion root, burdock root. You can get burdock root at the grocery store as well. That's a traditional bitter. Ginger is a traditional bitter as well with a little bit of heat to it. So it improves digestion, reduces inflammation, and has that little, you'll find that in bitter formulas many times. Now, I love to incorporate bitter foods into my everyday diet. There is a, 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 um, a teacher in North Carolina where I'm from, Frank Cook, he said, eat something wild every day. And I thought that's a fantastic uh, recommendation because wild foods are, are a great source of nutrition. They have much more life force in them than uh, something that's been cultivated and cared for and pampered. Uh, so you can go out, eat a dandelion leaf, eat a dandelion flower. Those are really good. Uh, and you'll just get some, some wild food in you, some highly nutritious food, and you'll get a little bitter stimulation as well. And then you can do digestive bitters as well in a tincture form. Uh, we make those here. Uh, we have our own little apothecary where we can blend up different bitter formulas depending on what, what your needs are. So in the classification of bitters, there are warm bitters, there are cooling bitters, there are aromatic bitters. So there's a variety of ways that you can go with bitters to elicit specific physi physiological responses. Um, so as an example, if somebody tends to run really hot, they're flushed all the time, you know, they're always red, they're always sweating, that's a person you would want to give some cooling bitters to. So things, uh, uh, you, don't, you, don't wanna, you wouldn't want to give them ginger as an example. You would probably want to give them something a little more cooling, uh, wormwood, uh, maybe uh, uh, some Oregon grape root, um, just some, some more cooling dandelion root, things like that. Uh, burdock root, the roots that are underground and, and a little more cooling. If somebody tends to run cold, um, then you might want to give them some spicy bitters, get that fire going in the belly again. So there's a, a variety of ways to work with these. And um, 
I just can't emphasize enough the importance of, of getting bitters back into the everyday diet. Um, like I said, it's the most important taste bud we may have ever developed for our own safety in interacting with the natural world as far as food and medicine is concerned. A lot of our medicinal plants uh, have bitter uh, aspects to them. Um, you know, here in Oregon, we have Oregon grape root everywhere. If you dig up the root and you look at it and you kind of peel off a little bit of that bark and under that bark, you're going to see this bright yellow color. And that bright yellow is a compound called berberine. It's also found in golden seal. And, uh, and that berberine is a bitter. It's a bitter compound. And one of the, uh, one of the things about berberine is it stabilizes blood sugar levels. It helps bring blood sugar levels down. It helps maintain stable blood sugar levels. It also helps with immune function. It helps stimulate healthy immune function. So bitters can be used in a variety of ways. They can be used to promote digestion. They can be used as a very gentle way to support liver detoxification. So many times people will do these really extreme uh, uh, detox protocols. Uh, my favorite way to do a detox is actually to just take bitters uh, more than at my meals. I would take bitters maybe five to six times throughout the day and get this nice uh, uh, stimulation for the liver to start uh, revving up its detoxification pathways, enhance that, that detoxification, then come in with maybe some bentonite clay um, uh, to absorb the toxins that get dumped down into the colon and help uh, run those out of the system. That's one of my favorite ways to do a detox because it's gentle, it supports your natural uh, uh, um, detoxification processes, and it's plant-based. So we're really working with something that our physiology is very, very familiar with. It has a, a long-standing historic interaction with. So, uh, so digestive improvement, um, detoxification enhancement, um, immune health, uh, lung health. So if there's any kind of uh, asthma or shortness of breath or shallow breathing, you can, you can use the bitters to help kind of relax the airways as well. Uh, stimulate the appetite or even reduce appetite. Really fascinating how it can work and how they can work in both ways. So we're coming up. Close to 6.30 already. How does a half hour go by so fast? I'll never know. So to just give you a, a, a broad stroke again, the liver uh, needs some challenge on a regular basis to really get proper detoxification uh, going. Bitters are a fantastic way to do that. You can incorporate them into your diet. You can take them as a supplement, particularly as a tincture. You don't want to take them in capsules because once again, it's really important that the taste of the bitter lands on the tongue. And that's what, what's going to trigger all the, um, the physiological responses that we want from bitters. And, um, and just know that, that this is a taste bud that was designed to look after your safety in the natural world as far as food and medicine was concerned. So it's a, it's a taste bud that really deserves our attention, and it's one that we've just shoved aside, we've eradicated, and we've replaced it uh, for the preference of sweet. And that preference of sweet leads to a sluggish liver. And if the liver is sluggish and it's not detoxifying properly, that's going to impact hormones. It's going to impact um, uh, a, a wide variety of things, including gut function, thyroid function, a variety of things. So digestive bitters, if there's any one thing that you can do to improve uh, your overall health, uh, um, take some bitters with your meals. About 20 minutes, you can take a couple dropper fools 20 minutes before you eat. That's going to get everything revved up and going and also incorporate some, some bitter foods back into your, your diet great in salads, endive, escarole, dandelion greens, your traditional greens, kale, collard greens, mustard greens, all of which have bitter components, burdock root, 
chicory root, dandelion root. These are some of the more common bitters that you're going to find out there. I hope that this information has been of benefit to you. I hope that you can take this and apply it in a, in a, in a really practical fashion to improve your health and well-being and, and maybe even uh, get a little more connected with yourself and the plant world as well. So uh, thank you very much for tuning in. Once again, this is Ron Vitell, the Nutrition and Lifestyle Coach here at Siskiyou Vital Medicine, a direct primary care naturopathic clinic in Medford, Oregon, sunny Southern Oregon. And if you have any pressing health questions that you want to get answered, please email us at admin at siskiyouvitalmedicine.com. We'd love to get your questions. We'd love to, to help you out as much as we possibly can, give as much information as we can to help you be well and stay well. Thank you so much. Have a great night.